Hello and welcome to the France Van Cat interview. I'm Marae Dundas. Now, my guest today has dedicated her life to promoting Indigenous rights, particularly those of women in her homeland of Guatemala, but also beyond. Her work earned her the Nobel Peace Prize at the tender age of 33, becoming the first Indigenous person to be bestowed with the honour. Rigoberta Menchu is in France to help celebrate the 10-year anniversary of the Quai Museum in Paris, which she helped inaugurate alongside the then-French president Jacques Chirac. Rigoberta Menchu, many thanks for joining us here on the France Van Gat set. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here with the Quai especially because President Jacques Chirac is a great friend. He's a great person. He helped us a lot when he was president of France. Therefore, I hope that he is well. I love him dearly, as always. You were here a decade ago next to the president at the time to help open Paris's first museum dedicated to non-European arts and civilization. What stood out to you about at that time about France's efforts to reconcile these different cultures under the one roof? Primero, eh, First of all, France and uh, its uh, leaders uh, since uh, President François Mitterrand, uh, the lady uh, Daniela Mitterrand. Daniel was a friend who helped me a lot when I needed support. Uh, they promoted me to the public opinion. And then with President Chirac, I remember quite well that when he was planning on building uh, the Quai Museum, he intended to show the Mayas and the indigenous peoples in the museum. And this is a museum that he uh, set up the way he thought. There were some bureaucratic issues because all the Mayan works weren't there as he had wished, but it was a time of of uh, indigenous people's rights. It's a time where pe indigenous peoples were getting to, uh, some space at the United Nations, some peace accords in Guatemala, and also the uh, acknowledgement of uh, indigenous people's rights in Latin America. Therefore, President Chirac became a world leader that had quite some relevance for indigenous peoples. Now, 2016 is also another anniversary, you just touched on it there, that of 20 years since the Guatemalan Peace Accords, ending a 36-year-old bloody civil war. How far has your country come since then? I think the most relevant of the peace accords of these 20 years since the accords, we succeeded two very important things. First of all, to end the internal armed conflict. This conflict lasted 36 years. It, uh, it killed thousands of people, atrocities. And since the war ended, it, it's very important that the war ended. Then the second aspect is justice. I think that we presented a legitimate uh, truth to justice. Uh, justice takes time and it's costly to reach justice, but there has been two very relevant sentences against uh, uh, hum uh, uh, crimes against humanity. And we have a court that judges crimes against humanity in Guatemala. So we didn't need to take our cases to other world courts. Even within our country, we are are judging these crimes. Then there's a, an enormous fight against the criminalization of human rights leaders, criminalization of social leaders or leaders that fight for environment. But this fight, fortunately, is being carried out in Guatemala and not outside Guatemala, because at the time we couldn't demand justice in Guatemala. 
very interesting given that Guatemala has indeed um, been accepted into the International Criminal Court, but for you it's very important that it is in Guatemala. Why is it? Because it's a, a, an issue that's very close to Guatemalans. Is that why? First of all, because the peace accords let very clearly the fact that we can't mix war crimes with human crimes. And uh, starting from these agreements, we could um, set up uh, for the life of the defenses of human rights the fact that they could call for the system and therefore victims were acknowledged. And and thanks to the peace accords. Without these peace accords, uh, it would have been uh, it wouldn't have been that clear. And therefore, the victim, the crimes of uh, uh, against humanity would have been able to sleep in silk uh, satin uh, beds, and nothing would have been done for the victims. You mentioned that progress has been done in justice, including a conviction for the man behind the death of your father and others during a deadly raid in the Spanish embassy in Guatemala City in 1980. Has justice been served for you personally? Well, for me personally, this has meant the dignification of my father's death because even some anthropologists from the U.S. said that my father ought to kill himself in the Spain embassy, that he had brought some oil to burn the rest of 37 people. And then when I put a claim, they said that I lied, that I invented, and even even in Guatemala, they said that if the most famous indigenous was a liar, then she would lie to all the Mayans who had lost dear uh, people dear to them. So it took 16 years of work to document the cases, and then the claim uh, in, got me involved in court uh, as a claimant and as a witness. Uh, fortunately, the sentence has placed the historical truth in penal justice. And the penal justice has said that my father wasn't a, 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 a member of the guerrilla, that he wasn't armed, that he was a peasant who claimed against forced work, against atrocity, and that he claimed for asylum. So it is important for me that it is clear that the truth is not Rigoberta Menchu's truth, but it's a legal truth for the generations to be seen. I'd like to fast forward just to crimes of today. You mentioned it. I'd like to touch on a report out by the UK-based Global Witness, which said in 2015 was the deadliest year for environmental and land activists. Three people were killed each week, of which 40% were Indigenous. Is fighting for land rights worth risking one's life today in countries or on continents like South America? Definitely, because in some places where a majority, in the case of Guatemala, we're a majority, therefore they can't treat us as a minority. And secondly, because peoples and new generations have to transition from cult culture to future generations, but also rights have advanced. There are more international rights, there are more rights in national legislations and there are more opportunities to study in college to study to get a better work. Therefore, indigenous peoples, I am sure that they are alive. I'm sure that the Mayas are alive. Their knowledge and the science is alive. And this science is a science for life, for a global coexistence, for a harmony between Mother Nature and human's life. Therefore, I think it is worth to defend this because it is part of 
uh, globe. Of course, there is more hate because the more rights we have, the more envy uh, people feel against us, the more hate people feel, the more criticism uh, are expressed. Sometimes in social networks we see that uh, some people use these social networks to denigrate uh, people, but uh, among all, I think we're winning dignity. And just finally, very quickly, during your visit to Paris, you'll be meeting with President Francois Hollande. What is your message for the French president? Well, first of all, the relationship was extraordinary between I and France since the time of Daniel Mitterrand and the president, François Mitterrand. Our friend Chirac was close to Guatemala. He proved that we were important people in the world, and France had a strong relationship with us. Therefore, I'd like to salute uh, uh, President Hollande to so that he shares a bit uh, and so that I share with him what's happening in Guatemala and also to out of courtesy because I feel France is very important for me. It was before and it is now. Rigoberto Mecci, I'd like to say a huge thank you for joining us here on the set here on France Van Gat. And thank you also to the audience for tuning into France Van Gat. Don't go anywhere because there's much more news coming up.